Broadcasting from the Hyatt Regency in Seattle, Washington, Solutions Review is on location at the FME User Conference 2025, the peak of data and AI. Brought to you by Safe Software. It's Doug Atkinson, and I am here with James Fee, Engineering Director at Trimble. Yes. Thanks for being here. I'm glad to be here. Excited. Well, we're all here in uh, in lovely Seattle, yeah. and uh, and I know you've come uh, a fair amount, a fair ways from Phoenix. What brings you up to here to to the to the peak of data and AI event? Yeah, I mean, for us, this is one of the most important conferences we attend. Uh, Safe Software has been uh, part of Trimble's DNA for over 20 years. Uh, so we, for us, it's to, to meet with not only our customers or who are here, but with Safe to learn what's new, what's coming, what to prepare, what we can do better. So for us, it's uh, invaluable for our team. We have a bunch of people here and they're in sessions right now, so they're all really excited. So what, do you, uh, what did you see yesterday in the, in the uh, plenary? The Anything yeah. that's jumping out at you as, as part of the new release? Yeah, the, 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 the virtualization. Yep. The ability to take data and expose it as, as APIs. You know, uh, Trimble uses FME two ways. One, we use it for our products, for our customers, but we also use it internally just for our enterprise data. And so being able to formulate endpoints of data that can be consumed across all the myriad of applications a company like Trimble uses is, uh, I think, it'd be a little bit transformative for us. Rather than doing one-off connections to different things, we can just expose an API and then let our internal developers access it and use it. So that, I think that's going to change how we use FME internally. Well, it, well, we'll break it down for everybody a little bit more about what Trimble's been doing lately. Yeah. You know, you guys are pretty large. You've got a lot of complex projects in play, but but what, uh, what's what's new? What's interesting? What's happening? Yeah, I mean, Trimble's a, a very horizontal company, right? We have a breadth of of software packages across you know, tr transportation, construction, those kind of things. And so for us, it data flows through a workflow, not just from a piece of software, but over the life cycle of the project, from conception to not just completion of project, but maintenance of projects. So the data gets into a lot of different places, a lot of different databases, software applications, internal and external to Trimble. And so for us to allow customers the comfort of knowing their data can go where it needs to at that time. That's what we try and use FME for, to expose that to if, if a customer needs data to come from Autodesk or go to Esri, it's not a very difficult proposition for us because we have the tools and the methods to allow that to happen. So I think you know, for us, it's how we can make that easier for customers without having to think about it. Just it's ready when they need it. Yeah, so the, 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 it, what, what I think is interesting with regard to the moment we're in, uh, which is, you know, everybody's talking about AI, and uh, is the need for data uh, in order to make some of this um, promise come, come to fruition. Talk a little bit about how you see yeah. AI starting to, to filter into it, because it seems like, I mean, truth be told, that a lot of the solutions that you've developed, a lot of solutions that, that have been developed, are fairly sophisticated already. Yeah. Um, how does AI come in and start to augment that or even improve it? it? It's really interesting you brought that up because I think it's, it's AI is for Trimble in twofold. One, Trimble has, I hate to use the word proprietary, but historical things that we have done over the years, algorithms, you know, right. methods that, that are very valuable, valuable to our customers. How do we expose them outside of the traditional tools right, the desktop application on some person's cubicle in the corner of a building to anybody who uses Trimble tools can have access to, you know, reprojection tools, CR, you know, uh, coordinate system reference, uh, you know, um, point clouds, those kind of things. But also, how do we protect customer data through this process? Because a lot of data that resides inside of Trimble is not ours. You know, it happens to sit in our system, but we don't own it. So you want to enable users to leverage that with AI, but also protect it that it is, you know, it's our data, it's not going to, to whatever, you know, um, right, large out light. there, yeah, yeah right. and, and do that. So that's where we kind of are, is how do we expose the unique things that make Trimble Trimble, the things that we've done really well for years, the things that people think, oh, Trimble's really good at that, you know, how do we enable that at scale? And then how do we allow customers to have confidence that when they say, hey, I want to, you know, because part of an AI is just creating a knowledge base that the AI 
can read and understand. How do I expose my data in that knowledge base with the comfort of knowing that it's not headed off to you know some nefarious place being used illegally? Yeah, it, it, it strikes me that we're in this kind of interesting moment where this superpower has arrived and, and, and it feels to me like a lot of people are hesitant to actually employ it for fear that they might get it wrong and it would have ramifications, kind of negative ramifications if they do get it wrong. Yeah. But also secondarily that they, they've never seen anything quite like it and so they don't know quite what to do because it seems like you can do almost anything. I mean, where do you, where do you, are, are people yeah. stuck? Do you feel like people are stuck right now or are they, where do you I, think they are in this, I, in this moment? I think they're nervous, right? You know, I look at it this way. We're still migrating things to the cloud. We still have systems that are not cloud enabled and we're moving it there. And it's been 20 plus years of cloud being available and right. we're still fighting those battles. So AI may not take 20, 30 years for it to complete, but it will take more than two or three. And it's hard to just, the speed at what, which the reiteration happens is so quick that it's, you know, we were in a session yesterday and they were showing all the different models that were available inside of, of SAFE, which is amazing, but some people are overwhelmed. Which one do I pick and how do I pick it and how do I know what to pick? And, and so you're kind of like stuck on just even getting started because there's so much information and knowing that, hey, in a week there's going to be a new model and what does it need to me, mean to me? So there's that, but there's, I think there's comfort in knowing that whatever we do in the next year will not be what we're doing in two years and five years and 10 years. And so to keep that in mind that the best thing you can do is prepare your data to be available for whatever AI models are in the future. That's what I would say is the bigger focus and then let the other stuff work its way out. It'll just, you know, as long as you know where your data is, you can use whatever model, machine learning or AI, right? Well, well, that's uh, I think that's one of the uh, the other sticking sticky pieces of AI is the fact that I think in many organizations the data I think there's a there's almost kind of a uh, a kind of a awareness that maybe the data isn't as good as it yeah. maybe needs to be in order to get the max out of and there and there isn't enough of it and and is it accessible is it is it do you feel comfortable right it's like I could see, you know, having an ERP be available to an AI being very valuable for company decisions, but I don't know if you're really too keen on exposing, you know, the, the monetary, you know, any workings of a company to it. So it's like knowing what makes sense, knowing the format they're in, like, is it locked in a database and, we, you know, how do we enable that? Or is it a PDF that can be read or, or is it just a simple markdown text file that it just slurps up very easily? Um, that is that, that really is the battle, right? Is 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 yeah. what's the format is, and and can it understand what it is? You know, just having a PDF that has no references to it, it can read it and understand it. But that's where they start hallucinating because they think that that one document is the most important thing, <laughs> and it's like, well, this is how it is, and you're like, well, uh, maybe not, you know. But the you hope over time the breadth of data will help average out these idiosyncrasies. But early on there's going to be peaks and valleys of, of, of greatness and, and despair just because it only can work with what it's been exposed to, right? So what do you say to clients um, that are coming to you and asking for your advice and, and guidance with regard to this AI moment? Yeah, you, I think today it's more of just a data management problem and how you can get your information together, uh, make sure it's in a, in a logical method, it's, it's accessible, maybe even move it up into a cloud, you know, some, maybe something as simple as an S3 bucket or more complex, say it's a service that, that enables this. You know, you can get started on that now and not have any fear of data being exposed anywhere. Um, that's kind of where I would focus today, especially if you like, what's the difference between one model and the other, I don't understand. Like, it'll make sense eventually to you. Uh, but worrying about which model is better at uh, you know OCRing, it's probably not where your time is best spent right now. So I think it's all about data management, and you know we're <laughs> that right behind you. It says peak of data, you know, and that's really you know what we're talking about here. Still, even though the word AI is at the end, it's really still about data management. Yeah, yeah. So what is uh, what has got you excited for uh, for your work with Trimble over the next year? Yeah, for me, it's, it's I, I kind of alluded to it earlier, it's making it easier for 
users to not worry about their data getting locked into a system, but having it freely be able to exchange. You know, for me, you know, if the endpoint of the data is in, in, a, in a competitor's product, I'm okay with that. You know, we have our part, we play it, we do really well, and the company is happy that it, it moves on. And, and I don't want to just say, hey, it's here, it's locked in, and, and you have to, you know, use our product or you can't. That's what I want to do is, is take away that, 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 that fear of, you know, vendor lock-in. Of, of proprietary, all those words that are, you know, not very positive that people say. And I want, you know, hey, we're just a, we may be one little, you know, stop along the way, or we may be the start and stop, who knows, you know, each project's different. So I want to make that as seamless as possible and expose that to users. And they don't, you know, we, we talk about low code, no code. I mean, I really want it to be no code, you know, that you don't have to even think about objects and models and all this stuff. It's like, you know, maybe maybe not today, but it is kind of the the AI. Hey, I just want to I just want this to happen. Figure it out for me. Uh, that's you know maybe we're not there today, but how can I expose these tools in a way that users don't have to understand, read a manual to do? That would make me very yeah, happy. Yeah, it feels like we're going to be there very shortly. Um, it's it's quite frankly, I couldn't be happier to be in this chair talking to people like you because. Uh, it's going to be the most amazing five or ten years I think we've ever seen in our lifetime. Yeah, and I mean, we're lucky to be right here right now at the beginning of this because yeah. even more than the cloud, we know whatever AI is going to be in 30 years, we will know we were there in the beginning. And yeah, we made some horrible mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> there was some, some despair and some sadness. But, you know, it's, it's almost like thinking about the generation after World War II that started building everything that made this modern cities that we're in now. That's where we are, and, except we're talking about data. And yeah. we just happen to be, that's our thing, which is really cool. You know, yep. it's, it's not somebody else doing it, it's us doing it. Yeah, well, best of luck. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I look forward to seeing all of the things that you guys are gonna be doing over the next Excellent. few years. But, uh, and maybe we'll see each other again in a year. Uh, at the next uh, FME. And we'll talk event. about this and be blown away with the changes. I'm yeah. sure of that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Thank great. You. Thanks. Bye. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.